this is such an interesting story. And if you have children, grandchildren, or anyone you know, please call them. Tell them to watch the television right now because this is one of those stories where I think young people are into a habit that they don't realize is dangerous. Now, the SABC story about the dangers of Hubbly Bubbly, also known as a hookah pipe, has gained huge traction on social media. And this, of course, uh, comes after health experts sounded the alarm about Hubbly Bubbly being a silent killer. Now, smokers of this hubbly bubbly are at risk of developing diseases such as cancer, heart and respiratory diseases, as well as adverse effects during pregnancy. Now, hubbly bubbly smoking is becoming more and more popular, especially among young people and particularly during social events. And according to the World Health Organization, one smoking session so one smoking session of hubbly bubbly can equate to smoking, get this, 100 or more cigarettes. Uh, let's just repeat that. One session, this is according to the World Health Organization, one smoking session of hubbly bubbly can equate to smoking 100 or more cigarettes. So to help us discuss the effects of smoking hubbly bubbly, we joined in studio by SABC uh, news reporter Silwane Kakao, as well as uh, joining us virtually, the head of the school and uh, director of the Africa Center for Tobacco Industry Monitoring and Policy Research uh, School of Health Systems and uh, Public Health at the University of Pretoria, Professor uh, Olalekan Ayo Yusuf. Professor, thanks for your time and thanks Silwane for coming through as well. So let me start with you, Silwane. This story, for obvious reason, has gained great traction. But what drew you to the story? Well, thank you very much, Sakina. And also, let me take this opportunity to greet all the SABC News viewers and also the Morning Live uh, viewers. So the first thing that made me have interest in telling the story was that, first of all, I took notice in terms of how many young people are smoking hubbly bubbly. And I noticed that most of them are smoking it just because it looks cool. If you ask them why they're smoking hubbly bubbly, well, I haven't gotten any other reason except the fact that it's a cool thing, it's a fashion statement, and it, it really just makes you look like a, a cool kid. And so I naturally thought, because this one time I noticed I was um, at some establishment and there was this huge smoke, and it, it was obviously the smoke of hubbly, and I thought to myself, with so much smoke there, I'm just wondering how much a person who's not smoking it, but is sitting next to them, is smoking it, you know, secondary smoking. And then I thought, well, what about that particular person is actually smoking it? And I thought, let me do some research into this. And when I did the research, I saw shocking results. Mm. That and, 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 you know, this is something that's been described as a silent killer. But as you say, you saw all of these young people. Um, and apart from just looking cool, uh, were you able to establish how they started and, and, and why, particularly, apart from just being cool? Uh, did, did some of them see this as an alternative to cigarettes and maybe think because they're not actually, uh, you know, smoking a cigarette, this might not be as harmful? So remember, um, after the uh, uh, um, uh, there was a bill, it, well, it's, it's currently still in Parliament, and after the um, direct marketing of tobacco products was, uh, was banned, um, they couldn't advertise on your mainstream media. And so they lost sales for, with about 30%. And so we understand from the experts that most of the people who... Um, left uh, buying cigarettes and the other tobacco products were young people. And so young people then naturally saw a gap of saying, uh, maybe we can go more to Hubbly Bubbly. Remember now, Hubbly Bubbly was now being indirectly advertised and promoted as less harmful uh, compared to other uh, tobacco products such as um, cigarettes and all the other products. And so young people became drawn to Hubbly Bubbly because they were given the impression that it's less harmful and it's not as dangerous. 
So, Professor, you know, just coming to the dangers, because it, it's unfortunate that there is this perception uh, that this is perhaps not as harmful because uh, perhaps it tastes good because they talk about the flavors that uh, they actually consume. But uh, talk to us about what it is that they are actually consuming when young people engage in smoking the sabli. Thank you. Indeed, um, it is very dangerous habit because it has lots of toxins in it. So just imagine, um, humbly, you've got the charcoal and you've got the tobacco that is burning. So in addition to tobacco burning and the tar that you get, you have extra toxins coming from the charcoal, and that's mostly carbon monoxide. So it's literally putting your mouth in a car exhaust and actually pulling that into your lungs on a regular basis. And that's got also heavy metals and, and all the toxins that goes right into your lungs. So it's actually an extremely dangerous habit uh, that uh, young people have not realized. And unfortunately, um, because of the social media and the fact that this is much, even more social, uh, using the social statements by young people, but oftentimes you'll find at least three to five people around uh, just one hobby so it just makes it easier for them to to use that and of course because of the volume of smoke when even you leave the room anybody that comes into that room thereafter will still be exposed to a large volume of toxins so it's about the volume and the time of exposure that is pretty dangerous Mm. And, uh, you know, again, Silwane, uh, you, did you have opportunity to actually speak to some of these young people? So what did they actually say to you? You know, uh, we interviewed this one gentleman. He's 30 years old. And we asked him uh, what, what just about the journey of his, li his life in terms of um, smoking hubbly bubbly, because he was in ICU for about 10 days. And this is what stood out for me. So he said when he was admitted, um, the doctors, without even knowing his, his story in terms of whether he smokes or not, the doctors told him, you smoke and you smoke hardly. And he said it's because the doctors were looking at the results of the x-ray. They could see that his chest was full of blood and water. And was also saying that his lungs also had holes and this is why the doctors immediately knew that it's not cigarette it's not weed it's not any other drug it's hubbly bubbly because the doctors have obviously seen these cases before he he was a patient i mean that is so scary uh prof uh, but of course you know again uh you you, you said something that is so um, hair raising that it's like putting your mouth uh, to an exhaust pipe and, and, and yet our young people still don't understand and, and from what Silwane is just describing the condition that the young men presented with uh, the physiological impact uh, that this has how do we bring that home to young people? Because uh, when it comes to cigarettes, you know, you have all these warnings uh, as a cigarette, smoking cigarettes can cause uh, lung cancer, this, that and the other. They put these gruesome pictures up now. But when it comes to vaping, when it comes to hubbly bubbly, uh, it seems very fashionable at the moment. Yes, indeed, um, it seems fashionable. I think we can continue to raise the awareness um, among young people, for example, many people think you can actually clean the smoke or they actually feel the smoke is actually cleaned when it goes through water. Uh, you cannot launder uh, a smoke because most of those toxins are not water soluble. So they are actually um, still in the vapor phase and you actually inhale all of that. Yeah. So it's a lot of deceit that um, once it passes through water, you're actually inhaling clean uh, smoke. So it's a lot of awareness that we have to do. But secondly, um, as earlier noted, the current bill needs to be passed as a matter of urgency. The establishment themselves, because actually the, the, the current law in South Africa actually prohibits indoor smoking, but you will go to many of these clubs, mm. you'll find a lot of hopeless smoking even they're not smoking cigarettes. 
So it's either the establishment themselves are ignorant or they know that they are actually breaking the law and nobody's enforcing the law. So my immediate recommendation uh, is not to go after the smokers, but actually the establishments to ensure that they enforce uh, or they obey the current law of not smoking indoor because it's purely smoking indoor and they are breaking the law. And I, I think that would take away the excitement uh, from from and the fashion of using Harbley as a start. Because even those who are not using Harbley that goes to this club, they're actually at danger because they're actually inhaling a large volume of secondhand smoke. And, and, and people are doing this at homes. You know, even parents, I don't think, are alive to the dangers inherent in this. Because, as you said, Prof, um, I think even as parents, we think, oh, maybe because we see water as part of the offering, uh, that there may be some sort of uh, cleansing happening yeah. of the harmful toxins, uh, which is not the case. Yeah. So how, how do we bring that message home to parents as well? And, and, and I'm just worried that... Are we sitting here with another huge, you know, pandemic that's about to hit us with our young people who will be collapsing en masse because of the sheer volumes of consumption of this thing? Yes, um, we've actually seen between 2018, we've done this national survey and this uh, Obli uses prevalence among 16, those between the age 16 and 24. And it has in, increased from 6% in 2018 to 16% in 2021. That is about one in, out of every five 16 to 24 year old actually uses Obli. And that is a massive increase. So, and that translates to over a million youth between the age of 16 and 24 that use Arbley. So when we do surveys, if we do not ask specifically about Arbley, you might think the increase in smoking is related to cigarettes, but it's actually Arbley that is adding to that increase that we've observed in recent times. So we are really sitting uh, with, with a potential uh, epidemic. Mm. Because once you smoke, because the long pipe also means you have to eat, draw uh, with a lot of effort to your lungs and that begins to weaken your lungs and what we call forced expiratory volume your ability to expire air which you need when you need to breathe uh, it starts to decrease because you've been pulling on this long uh, um, long um, pipe uh, for a very long time and that's why they end up in icu my word uh, Silwane, you know the case studies that you spoke to were you able to establish how long it took from the time that they started, the young man who ended up in ICU, from the time that he started um, smoking Hubley uh, until he ended up in hospital? How long was that? So, Sakina, I managed to speak to different um, smokers of Hubley Bubbly and also the experts. So what I established was that it depends. It varies from person to person. Remember that other people may have underlying medical conditions. Some are not even aware that they have underlying medical conditions. Say, for example, a person who's got asthma and you are inhaling all, all that smoke, it will definitely affect you differently than it would um, the next person who doesn't have underlying medical conditions. And just to go back to your previous question that you, um, you asked to Prof now, you know, some of these packages... Uh, of the hubbly bubbly flavors are actually written outside that hubbly bubbly uh, causes uh, different kinds of cancers and it also causes heart diseases but they're still buying it oh my the word. message is there but they're still buying it so people are just deliberately choosing um to be ignorant but then again remember it goes back to what i said that indirect marketing and indirect advertising and promoting of these products as though they are less harmful than your cigarettes and other tobacco products. So the people that you spoke to, after learning just how dangerous and harmful this practice is, what did they say? You know, did, did it shock them in some sort of way? Did it move them to perhaps try considering quitting? Absolute shock. You know, I received different um, kinds of responses. Some. You know, the videos went viral after we did the story, they went viral. And then other people were taken to social media to take out their reactions. Some were burning those hubbly bubblies, 
Some were throwing them away. Some of the parents were now making sure that their kids don't leave the house without checking what's inside their school bags. And some, on the other hand, are still pretty determined that I'm going to smoke hubbly. It's not harmful. It hasn't done anything to me. But then again, this is something interesting. The gentleman that we interviewed on our story was once upon a time that person who was in denial. Somebody posted a story about um, having lost their younger brother because of smoking hubbly bubbly. And they posted something to just to create awareness. And he commented, he said, well, if it's killing him, bring it to me then, because it's doing nothing to me. Little did he know that today would be sitting here telling his story because he was in ICU. So we don't want to see more people, young people, being these cases, these case studies that we go to interview because they were in denial when they shown the truth, when they were educated and informed about the dangers of smoking, hubbly bubbly and vaping. Mm. Uh, Professor, in terms of how addictive hubbly bubbly is, is it the same as, uh, you know, smoking cigarettes, uh, vaping, all of that? Is it a similar sort of profile in that regard? Yes, it is the uh, same thing. Um, it contains nicotine, perhaps even more nicotine. Um, and the general physiological process of addiction follows. Uh, basically, if you do not, if you use it for long enough, you develop tolerance and you want to take more. Um, and you, before you know it, uh, you can't stay without it. So you, it follows the same trajectory like, like any other addiction. And sometimes they need help. Uh, from 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 experts to help them quit um, oblis smoking, but importantly, you do also have people who can do it on their own without help, as we've found out in in South Africa. I mean, I've run um, um, cessation clinics for almost uh, eleven years, and I've seen many people, as was um, said earlier on, people come in with their kids not knowing that there was actually tobacco smoking because they just thought it was a flavor and they mm. do this at home, uh, which makes it very dangerous, particularly if it's a young person because their lungs are still developing and their brains are still developing. So they are plastic and easy to get addicted. Oh. The same thing for pregnant women. Uh, we've had uh, miscarriages and they never knew it was because of the obli because they say, I don't smoke cigarettes, I only use obli. Yeah. They, they did not know they were actually taking more nicotine and more toxins in their body. Wow. You know what? These revelations absolutely shocking, but I'm glad we had an opportunity to actually highlight it. And so do the right thing. Don't be scared, parents. Break it. You'll face the consequences later. Uh, uh, really, uh, if you listen to what Prof is saying, if you listen to Silwane's story, if you listen to what the World Health Organization is saying, there's no place for this. We are killing our young people. But uh, thanks so much to our guest, SABC reporter Silwane Khachau. And uh, also we were joined virtually by Director of the Africa Centre for Tobacco Industry Monitoring and Policy Research at the University of Pretoria, Professor Ayo Youssef, and uh, talking there about the dangers of hubbly-bubbly or the hookah pipe. Let us know your thoughts all the same.